Now, precession, as the name suggests, is the moment of the axis of rotation of a spinning body around some another axis. Now, this precession is a pretty common phenomenon, and you might have seen it happening with the spinning tops. As you are seeing this spinning top rotating right here, its axis of rotation is actually tracing out a path in the air. And this is not only limited to the smaller bodies, this is a phenomenon which also happens on a much larger scale, for example our Earth. Our Earth's precession is actually called the precession of equinoxes. I'll come to that later at why do we call this. But obviously we are going to have some effects due to this precession here on Earth too. And these effects are though not very noticeable in a human lifetime, but on the scale of centuries they do become pretty observable. Now, the first one is pretty simple. Since our Earth is changing its axis of rotation, the direction of its axis of rotation, our pole star is actually going to change. Now, pole star is the one which our Earth's axis of rotation is pointing at. Currently, it is Polaris, and as you might have seen it in the beautiful star trails, that it is a point which looks stationary. Now, as the time passes by, our axis of rotation is actually going to change the direction and this one star which is it's pointing at is also going to change. For example, the star which you might have known, our future North Star would be the Vega. And uh, there are not many bright stars which would lie on our path, so you might see no North Star at all compared to the brighter ones beside it. However, Vega is a brighter star, but it won't look as pretty because it is also slightly off axis so it wouldn't exactly look as a stationary point, but a small circle. Now this precession is actually going to trace out a circle on the celestial sphere. And the celestial sphere is the imaginary sphere which consists of all the stars as we see from the Earth. To understand the second consequence, we need to dig into the history. Now Hipparchus actually measured the longitude of Spica along with other bright stars, and he compared his measurements with the measurements of his predecessors. Now he found out that Spica has actually moved 2 degrees relative to the autumnal equinox. Now after making some more measurements and studying the stars, he actually concluded that the equinoxes were actually moving relative to the zodiac. And this was how we found out about the precession. And the rate of precession was not less than 1 degree in a century. Now understanding this is pretty simple. Since our earth is actually changing its axis of rotation, this is actually tracing a path on a celestial sphere. And because of this, our position of equinoxes are also going to change. So though Greek astronomers understood the precession of Earth, they really didn't know what's causing it. It was actually Sir Isaac Newton who found out and studied that it is actually due to the gravitational force of the Sun and the Moon. Newton knew that the Earth is not a perfect sphere. It bulges slightly around the equator. So the gravitational attraction of both the Sun and the Moon tries to pull the Earth's equatorial bulge into the Moon's and the Sun's orbital planes, acting like a spinning top. And because of this, the points of intersection between the celestial equator and the ecliptic shift westwards along the ecliptic at the rate of about 50 minutes of arc per year over 1 degree per century. Now these equinoxes process completely around this axis in about 25,868 years. So here in astronomy, it is more commonly referred as the precession of equinoxes, which is the movement of equinoxes around the celestial equator. But on the physics, it is actually more related to the physical process of precession, as we have seen in the spinning curve. So I hope you guys liked this video. That's it for this one. I'll see you guys later. Till then, goodbye.